It's pretty crazy to me how remarkably little information is out there about the candidates who are running for public office this election day, which by the way, most of you probably don't know, is November 4th, coming up pretty quickly. So I have made this video to hopefully help you become a better informed voter. I will try to be as objective as I possibly can with this, but it is not always easy. Also, I will not mention political parties, as I firmly believe political parties should hardly matter when deciding who is a better candidate for each position. To give you some frame of reference, I will provide where each candidate roughly is on the Nolan chart. Also, I apologize to those of you who live outside of Kansas City. I didn't have enough time to make a voter's guide for everyone in the country. So. I will talk about the elections I think are the most important to everyone, jumping back and forth between the Kansas side of the border and the Missouri side of the border. The biggest election on the Kansas side is the governor race. The incumbent is Sam Brownback, who has been the governor of Kansas for the past four years. Prior to becoming governor, Brownback served in a number of elected government offices. Most recently, he was a U.S. Senator for Kansas from 1996 to 2011. Before that, he was a U.S. Representative for one term. He began his political career in 1986, becoming the youngest person elected Kansas Secretary of Agriculture in Kansas history. Based on the results of the analysis by OnTheIssues.org that only looks at his voting records and public statements, Brownback is a moderate conservative both on economic and social issues. In a June 2013 analysis by the Business Journals, looking at 45 of the country's 50 governors by their job creation record, Brownback was ranked number 25. Brownback has cut income taxes by 25% since taking office and plans more cuts if re-elected. However, the state is now reporting hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue shortfall. The poverty rate has also increased. The state's economy has expanded less than its four neighboring states, and Kansas's credit rating has been downgraded. Brownback's biggest opponent is Paul Davis, who is currently the Kansas House Minority Leader. He represents District 46, which is in Lawrence, and was first elected as a state representative in 2002. According to the Project Vote Smart Political Courage Test, Davis appears to be a moderate liberal to moderate statist on both social and economic issues. Another opponent to Brownback is Keen Umber, an attorney from Alma. Umber's claim to fame came when he used to be a trash collector. After Wabunzi County commissioners terminated his contract after he criticized them in a local newspaper, Umber sued, eventually winning a U.S. Supreme Court ruling that said private contractors working for the government had the same free speech rights as government employees. He is running on three main themes, governmental accountability, governmental transparency, and getting rid of income tax loopholes that 191,000 businesses currently take advantage of. Based on my research, Umber is a libertarian on economic issues and a moderate conservative on social issues issues, although not as much as Brownback. The next biggest election on the Kansas side is the U.S. Senate race. The incumbent is Pat Roberts. He was first elected to the United States Senate in 1996, but was previously a member of the U.S. House of Representatives from 1981 to 1997. Interesting fact, I'm almost 33 years old, and he has been a member of Congress for longer than I have been alive. He serves on several important committees, notably the Agriculture, Nutrition, and Forestry Committee and Finance Committee. Based on the results of the analysis by OnTheIssues.org that only looks at his voting records and public statements, Roberts is a right conservative both on economic and social issues. Roberts has largely reflected the views of many Kansans over the decades, which partially explains why he has remained in office so long. However, earlier this year there was a controversy when it was revealed that he did not have a home of his own in Kansas, and that the residents he lists as his voting address belongs to two longtime supporters and donors. Robert's biggest opponent is Greg Orman, a wealthy businessman from Olathe. He notably has no political experience, but previously ran against Roberts in January 2008 before withdrawing in February 2008. Orman's popularity has seemed to come out of nowhere, and he has ran a populist campaign that mainly criticizes how there is too much division and not enough compromise in Washington. According to his website, Orman is calling for a simpler tax code, term limits, and reducing the national debt, but is fairly vague on most issues. Orman is by far the most moderate of all the major candidates running for office in the area, generally leaning toward the left on social issues and toward the right on economic issues. 
The third candidate running for U.S. Senate in Kansas is Randall Batson from Wichita. His website says he is a Navy veteran who previously worked at Cessna in the biopharmaceutical industry and currently as a quality assurance inspector at a manufacturing facility. Batson is a libertarian on both economic and social issues. A fourth candidate, Chad Taylor, dropped out of the race in September. This decision has ultimately hurt Robert's chance at re-election. The next largest elections on both sides of the border are the two House elections. U.S. Representative Kevin Yoder is the incumbent who has represented Kansas's third congressional district since 2010. He previously was a member of the Kansas House of Representatives from 2002 to 2010. Prior to his political career, Yoder worked as an attorney in private practice. He currently is on the Appropriations Committee, based on the results of the analysis by OnTheIssues.org that only looks at his voting records and public statements. Yoder is a libertarian on economic issues and conservative on social issues. Yoder's only opponent is Kelly Kultula, a former member of the Kansas State Senate, representing District 5 from 2009 to 2013. She also served as the 5th District Commissioner for the Government of Wyandotte County slash Kansas City from 2001 to 2005. She is currently the Director of Community Outreach for Youthville, a child advocacy organization. Though she is often vague on where exactly she stands, based on my research, Kultula appears to be a moderate on social issues and statist on economic issues. On the other side of the border, U.S. Representative Emanuel Cleaver is the incumbent who has represented Missouri's 5th Congressional District since 2004. He began his political career as a city council member in Kansas City in 1979 until elected as the mayor of Kansas City, Missouri. He was mayor from 1991 to 1999. Cleaver currently serves on the Committee on Financial Services. Based on the results of the analysis by the OnTheIssues.org that only looks at his voting records and public statements, Cleaver is a status-leaning liberal on both social and economic economic issues. One opponent to Emmanuel Cleaver is Jacob Turk, who is running against Cleaver for the fifth time. That's right, fifth. Turk is a Marine Corps veteran who is a former businessman, analyst, and programmer. If elected, he lists on his website eight main goals he would pursue. Reducing spending in Washington, lowering taxes, ending abortion, enacting term limits, closing the border with Mexico, promoting marriage as between one man and one woman, repealing Obamacare, and protecting Second Amendment rights. He is a right conservative on both social and economic issues. The second opponent to Cleaver is Roy Wellborn, who doesn't have a website for his campaign, but he has a Twitter and LinkedIn account. The only way to really find out where Wellborn stands is by checking his Twitter feed. According to many of his posts, he appears to be a libertarian on economic issues and moderate conservative on social issues. The description on his Twitter page simply says, quote, laid back, easygoing, online gamer, unquote. The other district on the Missouri side that I will mention is the 6th Congressional District. I didn't leave you out, Clay County. The incumbent is Sam Graves, who has been in office since 2000 and won two years ago by a margin of 32.5%. Graves began his political career as a Missouri State Representative in 1993. Following his first term, he was elected to the Missouri State Senate in 1994, where he served until his election to the U.S. House. He's from Tarkio, a small town in the northwest corner of the state. Based on the results of the analysis by OnTheIssues.org that only looks at his voting records and public statements, Graves is a far-right conservative on both economic and social issues. One opponent to Graves is Bill Hedge from St. Joe's. Hedge is currently a pastor at St. Francis Baptist Temple. Previously, Hedge worked as an assistant professor at Northwest Missouri State University and as an administrator, teacher, coach, and counselor in the St. Joseph School District from 1974 to 2003. Hedge calls himself a, quote, moderate conservative, but definitely leans statist on social issues and conservative on economic issues. This is the second time Hedge is running for Congress. The second opponent to Graves is Russ Monchel from Caldwell County. Monchel is the most libertarian candidate that I am mentioning in this entire video. According to his website, he, quote, works full-time in the hotel industry at the Kansas City Airport, has a producer license to sell legal insurance, and also enjoys breeding working line German Shepherds, unquote. He also is a member of Ron Paul's Campaign for Liberty, the Tenth Amendment Center, Drug Policy Alliance, Normal, Marijuana Policy Project, Guardian of Liberty, and the American Civil Liberties Union. Back on the Kansas side, there's a Secretary of State race. The incumbent is Chris Kobach, who has been in office since 2011. He is from Piper, although was a former city councilman in Overland Park. In 2004, 
He ran unsuccessfully for Kansas' 3rd Congressional District. He is famous for his strong anti-immigration stance, even helping to write strong anti-immigration legislation for other states. He made the news in September when he refused to take Chad Taylor's name off the ballot for the U.S. Senate election. His opponent is Gene Curtis Shodorf from Wichita. From 2001 to 2013, Shodorf was a member of the Kansas Senate, representing the 25th District. She was majority whip when she lost her re-election bid in 2012. She is a speech-language pathologist and was formerly on the Board of Education for the Wichita School District. In 2010, she ran for the open seat in the 4th District of the U.S. House of Representatives, but lost. There are also two candidates for the Kansas Attorney General race. Derek Schmidt, from Independence, Kansas, not Missouri, is the incumbent. He has been in office since 2011. Before becoming Attorney General, Schmidt represented District 15 in the State Senate, joining in 2000, and serving as Senate Majority Leader from 2005 until 2010. A.J. Kodich, from Topeka, is his opponent. He is a lawyer who previously worked for several state agencies. He has also served as Chief Attorney for the Kansas Department of Labor and a Marine Corps Judge Advocate General. The last statewide Kansas race is for state treasurer. Ron Estes is the incumbent and has been in office since 2011. Prior to his entry in politics, Estes served in consulting and management roles in a number of industries, including aerospace, oil and gas, automotive, and other manufacturing and service industries. He was also previously the Sedgwick County treasurer. His opponent is Carmen Aldrich from Topeka. She is currently a business development consultant. Aldrich served as Harper County Treasurer for 15 years before becoming Director of Vehicles under Governor Kathleen Sebelius. For Missouri, there is one statewide race I will mention here. There is a three-way race for Missouri State Auditor. Thomas Schweik is the incumbent and was elected to the position in 2010. Before he was elected, he was an attorney and professor. He's probably most known for alleging that the governor violated the state constitution by cutting spending on education and other services to help cover the costs of the Joplin tornado and spring flooding. One opponent to Schweik is Sean O'Toole, who's a software developer in Kansas City. Here's a quote from O'Toole, quote, If elected, I will be an activist auditor pointing out waste where found and encouraging citizen petitions where needed in order to audit government agencies suspected of such waste, unquote. O'Toole previously unsuccessfully ran for Missouri Treasurer in 2012 and also unsuccessfully ran to represent District 40 of the Missouri House of Representatives in 2010. The second opponent to Schweik is Rodney Farthing from Salem. Farthing served as a minister for 33 years and has worked as a development director for ARM Prison Outreach since 2001. He previously ran and lost for Missouri State Treasurer in 2008. Well, that's all I am covering, but I certainly left out lots of elections. Due to the fact that I'm getting tired and there's just a ton of candidates. I purposely left out the county and city elections, as well as the constitutional amendments. For the rest of the ballots, you're going to have to go do some more research on your own, I'm sorry. Jackson County voters can click here to see a sample ballot, and all Kansas voters can click here to see their sample ballot. You just have to type in your address and your county. I recommend the following websites for research on the candidates. I mostly used ballotpedia.org onTheIssues.org, and individual candidate websites for my research for this video. The most important thing is to be an informed voter. Really get to know a candidate before you make your decision. Ignore all the propaganda you get in the mail or see on TV. Just turn off local TV, as a matter of fact. Attack ads serve no purpose. Don't assume you know a candidate based off of their political party. In fact, I encourage you to completely ignore political parties and just look at each person. I know it takes a lot of time, but it really is your civic duty to take your time and research before you vote. Oh yeah, happy election day, and thanks for watching.